So there is a study going on claiming that a third of men under the age of 30 never had sex, and there is an even bigger number of men who aren't having sex as much as they would like. And of course this has got leftists concerned because um, only studies and experts get to concern the leftists. They do not get to experience the world around them by themselves for some reason. Unless an institution tells you that something is happening, they are absolutely clueless. They can just can't figure out what is going on in the world unless you have an expert. As if uh, they, they couldn't tell this just by looking at their friends. They couldn't tell this just by observing the world around. So what I find interesting is that many times people on the left, they do realize that there is a problem. Uh, but the solution that they come up with is completely bewildering. So in this situation, I have seen many left-leaning people suggest that the government should provide people with sex. Now, I know that sounds very bizarre, but there are countries where it actually happens. Um, for example, in Northern Europe, I believe Norway is one of these nations where, again, you pay taxpayer money to the government. And the government then hires some professionals, uh, experts, if you will, uh, which get to service people that have needs. Um, this is in the case of people that are very old, people who, due to various conditions, cannot satisfy themselves. So we're talking about people in wheelchairs, people that have no arms. Uh, it's kind of the same, like, uh, healthcare is a human right, so the government takes taxes from people and then hires doctors in order to provide medical treatment for people that require it. Kind of the same idea. I gotta say, I would find it a little bit bizarre knowing that uh, I'm paying taxes. Like, part of my hard work, like, I, I slave away, I labor away for eight hours a day, and a chunk of that money gets taken from me so other people can have sex. It's, it's just like, I don't know if I'm really comfortable getting into that mindset right now. I, I just gotta say, there are a little bit of ethical dilemmas there. Uh, but the other solution that the left has is to legalize sex. And by the way, I am in favor of that. There are nations in the world where sex is legalized. Germany, for example. Uh, but we need to face the reality that in most countries, even where prostitution is outlawed, people who legitimately want to spend money for that particular type of service from a lady of the night uh, will eventually find ways. I mean, I, I, I don't think the crackdown is so hard to the point where it's impossible. So what I think the problem is here is not that men aren't having sex, is that men aren't having relationships. They don't have companionship. And this is indeed a problem because human beings aren't solitary creatures. We are meant to form meaningful relationships. So I remember when I was a teenager, the main problem that I was having and many other friends of mine was that you would go onto the park and you see all these couples holding hands and you see all these couples doing couple activities and you're longing for that. You want that. And that's more important than the sex itself. In fact, I would argue that if sex was just freely given to people, like whenever someone wanted to, a government agency would help you out, it would actually do more harm than good. Why? Because the act of sex is also very important to form a connection with someone. It, it creates a powerful bond. It's an emotional thing. It's not just like the act of pleasure itself, but it's also something a lot deeper. And we notice when people, like when a man becomes a womanizer or when a woman has multiple partners, the chances of finding love becomes more and more difficult you get less happiness, you get less fulfillment from a relationship. So I don't think that this would solve the problem the way the left proposes it. In fact, from what I noticed, at least on Twitter, many leftists don't even understand why the problem exists. Like, uh, there were many people suggesting that, oh, men just have to learn basic human decency. Like, a lot of men don't have basic human decency, and that is why they can't find a date. I mean, imagine living in this uh, black and white scenario, uh, this very interesting fantasy world where a third of the male population just lacks basic human decency, but the women are incredibly perfect, like absolutely no flaw amongst them. Um, and, and it's just that they abstain from having a relationship because of this complete lack of basic human decency, which I don't even know how you define it. Like every time I hear a person saying the concept basic human decency, I ask, can you define it? Like what, what would that mean? Because like what, what would you consider to be advanced human decency like what would you consider to be expert phd level human decency right like what, what what do these things mean it's it's completely ambiguous no in reality i do believe that the reason for uh, a lot of men unable to find a significant other has to do with social media and dating websites um 
There are many other reasons, but this is probably the core one. Why? Well, think about it this way. When your parents were young and they were dating, you could only date from within your close circle of friends. Like, that was your dating pool. So, you would probably notice someone around you, whether it was at work or at school. And if you didn't, then you would ask someone to introduce you to a friend of theirs. But, like, the number of people that you would have access to was definitely very limited. And it was usually people around your age. Now, if you look at how things work nowadays, well, you go on Tinder and you have thousands of potential candidates and you start swiping right and left as if you're at a supermarket buying produce. And now you have all this big pool of men who are still living with their parents because they can't afford to move out. They may not even have a car and they have to compete with other men who have their own apartment, who have their own car, who have their shit together. And of course, these men who are on Tinder and they're on these dating websites, they don't just get one woman and form a relationship. No, they sleep around. They go around with many women. And a lot of women, they uh, want to be with those types of men. So it's a very difficult competition. It's very difficult to compete. I completely understand it. Right? If I was a woman, why would I go with the guy living with his parents when I can go with the guy that uh, works at his own company? So that is one of the problems. Another problem was um, a study which came out recently and was talking about the fact that men are afraid to approach women on the street. Why? Because they think that women will find them creepy. Why? Because of modern culture. Right? And you have this whole concept of no means no. In other words, uh, Gillette itself, like the commercial from Gillette, showed that it is unacceptable to approach a woman on the street under any circumstance. Right? So all of the dating is moving away from the traditional, the conventional side of meeting women out in a bar, meeting them out in the bus station or whatever, and is now moving online to social media, where the competition is very difficult. But the, the upside is it's very difficult for men under the age of 30. Once you get past the age of 30, then you get the dating opportunities. And you probably have a lot more opportunities than you would have when you are under age. The problem is, for the women, it's probably the reverse. Like, women have a lot of dating opportunities when they're young, but after they get past the age of 30, that they the dating opportunity is lower. So, it's not fair. It is not something uh, equitable or equal, or but it is life. I don't know a solution to this problem. I guess uh, a solution would be if people would even start to try and address this problem, because as far as I know... There are no people that instruct men on how to gain more confidence, uh, to try and be more masculine, and know how to be more appealing and how to approach women. China is doing this right now, by the way. Like China is uh, definitely taking a step into trying to make its men more masculine and it's promoting this actively. I'm not sure if this is the solution, but what I do know is that, yes, it is a problem, and the way to fix it is not to just uh, give sex to men uh, through the powers of the government. Like, I understand that left-leaning people like to think that the government is God and any problem and any solution can be solved by the government, but this is not one of them.